chapter 161 of Srimad Bhagavatam, Krishna, the life and soul of Gokula. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Krishna was a great favorite of the gopis. He would spend all his time in their house, in their houses. He would dance to please them when they asked him to do. They would clap their hands and he would turn around and round on his heels like a top and they would all look at his flying hair and lovely necklaces falling on his tiny chest and they would clasp him to their breasts. He would then smile at them and entertain them with his singing. Suddenly, one of the gopis would say, Krishna, go there and bring that pot or vessel or charner for me. Krishna would rush to obey her bidding and clasping the object, object in his hands, he would pretend as though it was too heavy for him and that he was training under its immense weight. Laying it on the ground, he would shake his arms as if to shake off the fatigue caused by the task. Krishna and Rama would spend hours together playing round in the mud and would never listen to their mothers calling out to them, asking them to come in and have their food. One day, Rohini called out to Krishna and then to Rama, Look, you are both so soiled with mud in which you have been playing for so long. Come inside. Rama, today is your Janma Nakshatra. Come inside. Have a holy bath, both of you, since your father wants to perform the rites proper for today. Look at the other boys. They are all dressed. Only you are both still dirty. The boys would not listen and Rohini gave up. She spoke to Yashoda and said, Sister, only you will be able to make the children come inside and have a bath. I tried, but I could not do. I could do nothing with them. Yashoda then came out and said, Krishna, O oh Krishna, my darling son, with lovely eyes like the lotus, please stop your play. You are both tired out since you have been playing for so long. You do not realize it, but you are very hungry. Come inside. Rama, my child, my darling child, come inside and with your younger brother, have your baths and your food. Your father is waiting for both of you. Please come. And with a firm voice, she spoke to the other children playing with Krishna and Rama. Look, children, please come, go to your homes. Only then will these two listen to me. Krishna and Rama behaved like all naughty children do in every household. They took great care not to let anyone know or guess the divinity of their birth or the great purpose for which they, have, they had taken their avatars. The innocence of the people of Gokula was too beautiful to be sullied by the immensity of the knowledge that their charges were Ananta and Narayana. They could never have grasped the truth, nor would they have behaved so naturally with the children as they did. If Yashoda had known who her son was, she would not have been able to bear the burden. That was why, after granting her a moment's glimpse of his real nature, Krishna enveloped her again with his Maya and made her forget what she saw. To them, Krishna was a delightful boy, hardly a boy. He was so full of mischief and so dear to everyone. Without their knowing why, everyone was drawing to him and they loved him. Narayana had never been loved as he was in Gokula by the gopis and the gopalas. He was extremely happy in this role he played. He could relax and he did not have to let anyone into the secret about himself except Rama who was himself an avatar. Krishna's only task was hiding his divinity and he did his best to do it. The killing of the Asuras should have made the people wonder as to who he was. But they did not since Krishna managed to make them blind to the extraordinary feats he performed. Everyone thanked Narayana for sparing their child without thinking about the incident and about Krishna's part in it. So well did Krishna conceal his divinity that only very few could see behind the wheel.
ഓം നമോ ഭഗവതി വാസുദേവായ ശ്രീ കൃഷ്ണാർപ്പണവസ്തു ചാപ്റ്റർ വൺ ഹൺഡ്രഡ് ആൻഡ് സിക്സ്റ്റി ടു ഓഫ് ശ്രീമദ് ഭാഗവതം എ ഹാൻഡ് ഫുൾ ഓഫ് ആരണ്യക ഫ്രൂട്ട്സ് ഓം നമോ ഭഗവതി വാസുദേവായ വൺ ഡേ വെൻ കൃഷ്ണ വാസ് പ്ലേയിങ് ഇൻ ദ കോർട്ട് യാർഡ് ഹി ഹെർഡ് എ വോയ്സ് ഇൻ ദ സ്ട്രീറ്റ് ഫ്രൂട്ട്സ് ജംബൂൽ ഫ്രൂട്ട്സ് he rushed to the door and saw a nishadha woman with a basket full of aranyaka fruits poised on her head krishna called out to her and said give me some fruit i love these fruits she smiled at him and his childish lisp and said sure i will give you the fruits but you must pay for them pay he asked with his eyes open with wonderment what does pay mean You must give me something in return for which I will give you the fruits she said All right said Krishna I will give you grains will you give me the fruits then bring the grain I will certainly give the fruits she said she placed the basket on the ground while Krishna rushed in Krishna went inside to the storing place and with both his palms held together like the bud of the lotus he took the grain from the vessel where it was stored he ran towards the women and all the while the grain kept on falling all along the passage from where the grains were stored to the door of the house he went to her and holding out his hands he said see i have brought grains for you now give me the fruits she saw his sweet little hands empty of grain and pink with beauty she looked beyond and saw the split grain all along the trail she looked beyond the saw she looked beyond and saw the spilt grain all along the trail she took both his hands in hers and filled his palms with the choicest fruits from her basket the paramatma who is beyond the comprehension of the intellect beyond all the aranyakas the upanishads that have ever been spoken wanted a handful of aranyaka fruits such was his leela on the earth those who listen to this story will have no need of aranyakas to reach him when the time comes the nishada woman went home and found her basket to be very heavy she placed it on the ground and looked inside she found it to be filled with precious gems she sat and wondered about it and could not solve the riddle om namo bhagavate vasudevaya shri krishnar panamast chapter 163 of shrimad bhagavatam from gokula to brindavana from gokula to brindavana om namo bhagavate vasudevaya The Gopas in Gokula held a council with Nanda at the head. The subject was the danger which had been assailing Krishna so often and so the safety of Krishna became their chief concern. The elders of the place were there and the oldest of them was called Upa Nanda. He spoke first and said, "In my opinion, we should abandon this place." all together and seek some other safe safer place this place has become too dangerous for the child the utpathas are all bad premonitions tell us that there is more trouble in store for our little prince as it is he has escaped destruction four times there was the rakshasi who was bent on killing him then there was the cart which would have crushed him very soon after that we had the dust storm which threatened our little darling and now these two trees would surely have been the death of our krishna if it had not been for the grace of narayan fortunately gokula has not been touched yet by evil agencies before that happens we must make preparations to leave this place the children should be protected at any cost that should be our main concern I have been told that there is a spot by name Brindavana. This nest nestles at the foot of the small mountain 
by name Govardhana. The name itself assures us that our cattle wealth will be protected by this mountain. The forest surrounding the mountain I have heard is full of luscious grass and our cows will be happy. Our Gopalas and Gopis will surely be happy in this new place, I suggest. If everyone is agreeable to my suggestion, let us not waste even a moment. All the Gopas were quite willing to abide by the decision of the old man and Nanda. Soon there was seen the caravan which took the entire population of Gokula to the new dwelling place Brindavana. Cart after cart wended slowly, filled with all the belongings of the Gopas, women, children and old men with the older women were made to sit in the carts while the younger men walked with their bows and other things like bugles and trumpets and such like in their hands. The cows from Gokula went ahead in large herds protected well by Gopalas. Brahmins went along with them chanting mantras to ward off evil. As for the women, they looked like they were on their way to attend some festival. Each one of them was wearing her best silks with flowers in their hair and garlands on their necks. They went all the way singing songs which spoke of no one but Krishna and his thousand pranks. Yashoda and Rohini were seated in a cart and with them were Rama and Krishna. They would have loved to walk along with the others singing and dancing, but they could not do so. A silent pair of children they were, and the mothers were thrilled since they had their sons to themselves for a while for the first time after they learned to toddle around the place. The trail ended. The journey was over. They had arrived at Brindhavana. Rama and Krishna jumped down from the carts. Their eyes rested on the majestic mountain Govardhana, on the lush green forest as it, at its feet, and the beautiful dark river Yamuna flowing placidly. Their eyes blessed the spot before the others saw it. Life in Brindavan became a great adventure for the children. Rama and Krishna were now old enough to go out with the older Gopas. The younger boys were allowed to gaze, graze the calves and that was the task assigned to Krishna and Rama also. They would spend all their time playing and when the boys came home, they would relive the day thinking of the fun they had during the day. Every day before leaving for the copse, they would collect playthings which they would need there and once they were out of the sight of their mothers, there was no holding them back. Krishna would sometimes play the flute. Sometimes they would have fun throwing stones at the trees, bearing fruits and eating the half-ripe fruits of the bilwa tree. With their ankles, anklets, making sweet music, Rama and Krishna would spend their time kicking the trees around and running around with the other boys. Covering themselves with blankets, they would play at the game of make-believe, frightening each other and pretending to be cows or bulls. Sometimes they would sing like the birds of the forest and laugh heartily at nothing at all, which only children have the good fortune to do. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudeva Shri Krishna Panamast Chapter 164 of Srimad Bhagavatam Vatsa and Bhaka Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya One day, while Rama and Krishna were grazing their calves on the banks of the river Yamuna, an Asura who had been sent by Kamsa went there to kill them. This Asura assumed the form of a calf and joining the herd of calves, he went wherever they went. Krishna saw him and he knew who he was. Quietly and secretly, he spoke to Rama about it. He then pretended as though he knew nothing about it, as though nothing untoward was happening. Very slowly and very casually, Krishna approached the Asura, who was unaware of the fact that his guise had been discovered. Suddenly, Krishna grasped the hind legs of the little calf and whirled him around and round. 
when he flung him down on the grounds the asura whose name was watsa was dead while falling he hit against all the trees and the ground was covered with the fruits of the wood apple tree the children who were with him were amazed at what krishna had done flowers fell on krishna from the heavens the devas were so pleased with the deeds of krishna and they were happy that another asura had been killed without any of effort these two gods who were the protectors of the universe walked the woods of brindavana like ordinary cowherd boys who were set to the task of guarding the calves one day they went to the banks of yamuna to give water to the calves which had had their full fill of grass the boys too had long drinks of water and when they and, and when they looked round they found a new kind of being on the banks this was a frightening looking bird if if bird it might be called it appeared to be a piece of a mountain cut off by indra with his vajra so big was it in size they found that it was an immense crane an asura by name baka was waiting there to kill krishna he was lying prone and the boys came near to see what the object was before they knew what was happening the object came to life and with its beak opened wide it swallowed krishna it had happened so suddenly that no one knew what to do krishna their krishna had been swallowed by a terrible looking bird that was all they could grasp and they were stunned with grief baka in the meantime felt a ball of fire traveling down his long neck and he could not bear the pain he spat out the child whom he had swallowed he then rushed towards krishna to peck at him with his powerful beaks which were like large spikes of iron krishna waited for this henchman of kamsa to come near him when baka was close enough krishna caught hold of the two ca- two halves of the open beak and while the others were looking on he split the terrible bird in two flowers rained from the heavens and there could be heard divine music to celebrate the achievement of the wonder boy of brindavana balarama and the other boys rushed to krishna and embraced him before they could suffer the agony of the thought krishna was killed they had seen him emerge from the mouth of the bird and the next moment krishna had killed it and now it seemed to be not a bird at all but dreadful asura they rushed back to their homes and told everyone about the wonderful feat of krishna nanda and the others thanked the heavens for protecting the children from these dreadful happenings they spoke among themselves how often has death threatened these children and strangely enough it is a good fortune of all of us that the killers themselves have been killed why they must have sinned much before and when they approached our krishna with the intention of killing him they have been killed like moths are destroyed while approaching a flame with the intention of eating it nanda thought to himself what the great gang garga said is true this son of mine will be long lived and he will be famed the world over for his bravery and for his prowess om namo bhagavate vasudevaya shri krishna arpanamastu